Hi there, this is Manuel with Entagma, and I am here with a new Geometry Nodes tutorial. Today I want to do some Geometry Nodes simulation, that is why I am using one of the experimental builds. I am using the build from November 24th. I think there are three experimental simulation builds, that is the first one, but the other two should work too. So make sure to get the alpha build, because you will need it for the setup. And what do we want to do today? Well, I have points here created by the distribute points on faces node and they are intersecting or they are very close together and I want to relax them. I know that you can switch to Poisson disk mode here to remove these points, but I don't want to remove them. Instead, I want to move them around until they are touching and not interpenetrating anymore. For this, I defined sizes for the points, as you can see here, and my algorithm will move them around until they are touching but not intersecting, like this. And how do we do this? Well, we will use the merge by distance node. I have a radius here and I will double the radius and use this to merge the points. I can show this to you. This is the orange points. And whenever points are closer together than two times their radius, they are intersecting. And that is exactly when the node will create a midpoint, the orange ones. Here, for example, we have four points close together, so we get a midpoint. We know whenever this midpoint is not exactly at the position where the particle is, that we have to do something. We can use these newly created midpoints to create vectors between the old points and the newly created points. That is these red vectors. And then we can use these red vectors to move the particles along these vectors in the yellow directions. So let me step through the algorithm to show you what happens. We have a newly created midpoint here, we calculate vectors, and now we move the particles along these vectors. And this resolves one of the intersections here. Now everything is repeated, new midpoints are created. These two particles are penetrating each other, so we have a new midpoint exactly in the middle, and we have two vectors that move the particles apart in the next step, and again, until they are not intersecting anymore. And then the orange midpoints are exactly where the particles are, so no more movement is done. And this is just repeated until a state is reached where no particles are intersecting anymore, as you can see. So this, over time, will reach the correct solution, as you can see. So let me play this. What happens is we start with a situation where the particles are overlapping. And if I play this, you see that they are moved as long as they are intersecting until a state is reached where everything is relaxed. Great. Let's create a fresh Blender session and let's implement this. First select everything and get rid of it and instead create a plane and call this relax. This is where our setup goes. So we will need a geometry nodes viewport and let's create a new tree. Now we want to set up simulation. Inside of the simulation builds, you will find a simulation category and in there we have two nodes, the output and the simulation input. And if you create both, you get this convex hull indicating that everything that happens between these two nodes will be simulated. So first, let's create some points by laying down a distribute points on faces node. And let's create some points on our plane. This is our initial state. And now this initial state goes into the simulation and then the simulation goes into the group output, like so. And now we can simulate between the two nodes. To show you how this works, let's quickly drop a set position node, set position. And if I dial in a little offset here, say along the x-axis, 0.01, for example, the particles will move because 0.01 is added to the position of the particles in every frame. That is how simulation works. Now they are moving. Great, but we don't want to move them along the x-axis. Instead, we want to do something a little bit more involved. First, we want to find midpoints when the particles are close. So let's lay down a merge by distance node and let's merge all these points with a distance of 0.1. Because I target a particle size of 0.05 meters, this has to be twice the radius. Let's see what this gives. And we have some consolidated points here. Now we want to find the vectors between the original points and these newly created points. To do this, we need a geometry proximity node because this does exactly this. So for the target, we want to use a new point cloud and for the source positions we want to use the positions of these points. So let's create a position field and remember this field will spit out the positions of the points where the output of this node is used on. And as we 
want to use the output of this node. Here with the set position node, this will be all the original points. Now switch this to point mode because we want to find the closest points. And now we have the closest position. That means that we can calculate the vector between the original points and the newly created points by using a vector math. Vector math, set it to subtract. And now let's take the position and subtract the closest position. Remember the tip first rule, the position minus the closest position will give the vector that points from the closest position, so from the center point to the particle, repelling the particles. And I can use this to offset the positions of the particles. But I don't want to use the vector with its full length. Instead, I want to shorten it a little to make the simulation more precise. So let's duplicate this vector math node and set it to scale to make the vectors shorter and scale them to 0.5. Now this is our translation vectors. Let's take this and put it into the offset here. Let's see if it is working. And before we press play, make sure to reconnect the output of the simulation to our group output. And it is working. They are moved apart. Now, what if we quickly introduce the instance on points node and take the output, put it here, and let's create a sphere, an icosphere, and give it a radius of 0 0.05, that is our particle radius, and put it here into instance, and connect this to the output. And now let's see what happens. Here we have intersecting ones, and they are moved out of the way until they are not intersecting anymore. Up the resolution here, and let's clean up a little. So this is post-process after the simulation, and here is what is happening inside of the simulation calculating the midpoints and moving stuff around. What happens if we go up with the density? You have to rewind to reset and it is working. Stuff is moved out of the way until it is not penetrating anymore. What if we wanted to do the same thing, but on the surface of a different object? Let's create a torus for this. So mesh torus, Let's go to the settings and up the resolution to 96 and 48. And I want to have a torus that is one and 0.5 here, like this. Let's shade this smooth and quickly go to random shading here. Now back in our setup, let's take the torus and drag it in and let's use this torus to create points. And you can see it is working on the surface of a torus too. The problem is that these vectors are created and the particles are moved around, but they are not sticking to the surface of the torus. So if I go up with the density to 50, say, let's see, the algorithm is moving the points around, but as you can see here, they are leaving the surface of the torus sooner or later because they are moved in 3D space to resolve the interpenetrations. But we can avoid this by just projecting them to the torus after they've been moved. So let's just introduce a second set position node and use this one to just move them to the torus in every step after they have been moved. So let's take the torus. We can just duplicate this, not to have long connections here. And now we want to calculate the closest position on the surface of the torus. We again need the geometry proximity node. The target this time is the torus, and we want to set this to faces mode. And now we need again a position. And as we use this setup here on this set position node, this position will output the position after this set position node happened. And this to the position, and now let's see what happens. And you can see now they are relaxing on the surface of the torus, but they are not leaving the surface. So with this setup, you now have a way to relax particles on the surface of different objects. And the time it needs to find a stable solution depends on the complexity of the situation. The more particles you have, of course, the simulation will need more time to resolve the situation. So if I go 150, let's see what happens if I do that. Now it will never find a solution because you just have too many points to fit on the surface of the torus. So let's go down to 100, still too many, 75, and this sort of works. The problem is just they are moved too far in every step. So the offsets are too large. That means one point is moved out of the way, but then penetrates a different particle and is moved back. So let's see if we can help by making the vector smaller. Let's go to 0 0.2. This will take longer, but it reaches a stable solution. 
because the particles are not moved that far in every step. And now, if we want to pack the torus, we could, in theory, not start with all the particles already on the torus, but add particles over time. To do this, we can set it up like this. Let's take a second distribute faces node with the torus as the mesh. But this time let's go down to three with the density to only create few points. Now we want to use a join geometry node. And inside of the simulation, we want to join these newly created points in. So let me first show you how this looks by connecting this here for a second. We have a few points. And in every frame, we want to join them into the simulation. But if we do that, we will create points at the same location all the time. So we want to vary the seed in every frame to create different positions. That is easy by just using a scene time node, scene time, and just take the frame and put it here into seed. Now the node creates different positions in every frame. Let me move this out of the way. And we can use the join geometry here. Let's create a rear root and put the join geometry here. And now just take the output of this node, start with it, and then join the newly created points in, in every frame. To see the result, we of course have to connect the geometry to the simulated output like so. And now let's see. And you see we are adding more and more points into the simulation. And at the same time, they get relaxed until we have so many points that the relaxation cannot happen anymore. So we have to stop sooner or later. To stop this process, let's lay down a switch. We want to switch between adding in points and just the simulation data. So let's move this stuff over to make some space here. And we want to switch between this, false, and just the simulation data. So when this is true, we just use the simulation data. And if this is false, we add in more and more points. Great. So now we can just create a condition by using a compare node and we can take the frame and say, well, if the frame is greater than say a hundred, then this gets true. So let's see, it adds points, more and more points until it reaches a hundred and then no more points are added. But that is still a lot. So let's go down to 30. So it will add points until frame 30 and then it will relax the points that it added and that packs the torus. And while this is not perfect, it already is pretty good. And that is how you relax points on the surface of a different object. I hope you found this information helpful and thank you for listening. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon, not only for supporting Antagma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as particles, vellum, geometry nodes, and so on and so forth. And at this point, let me say thank you so much to all our existing Patreons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.